In this lesson, we are going to take a look at graphing rational functions. We'll take a look at um, the parent function and how to graph the function using transformations in this online lesson. And then we'll expand on that when we get to class and talk about other ways to graph rational functions. So since this is a new parent function for us, let's take a look at what the general um, function of a rational looks like. First of all, the form of the function itself looks like this. f of x equals 1 over x. So basically what makes something a rational function is the fact that you have a fraction and you have a variable in the denominator of that fraction in some place. Okay. So the most simple form of that is simply 1 over x. And if we take a look at some of the values that we would get in this function, if I put in negative 3 for x, then I would get a negative 1 third. If I put in negative 2, then I have a negative 1 half. If I put in a negative 1, then negative 1 will be my answer. And if we put in a negative 1 half or negative 0 0.5, we would end up with a negative 2 as an answer. Now I'm going to jump 0 for just a second and talk about the positives of those numbers. So a 0 0.5 positive will give us positive 2. Positive 1 will give us positive 1 for an answer. Positive 2 will give us 1 half. And positive 3 will give us 1 third. Now what about 0? What happens when we put 0 in for x in the denominator of the function? Well, hopefully you remember from previous lessons and previous classes that we cannot have 0 in the denominator, and therefore we cannot get an answer to when x is equal to 0. So we say that this is undefined. So one of the first things we realize here about rationals is that there's a new characteristic, which is there are some values of x that may give us answers that are undefined. So when we go to graph this, we use that as a um, characteristic in the graph. So we're actually going to say, well, if I cannot use x equal to 0, then on the graph, I want to make sure that I don't accidentally graph on that axis or on that point. And so I'm going to put in what we call a vertical asymptote, which is just a dotted line at this equation of z x equals 0, which is the y-axis that just lets me know my graph should not cross over this line. Because if it does, then that point has an x-coordinate of 0. Okay. Now, we can also think about this in the opposite way. This is telling me that I cannot use x equal to 0. But what about getting an answer of 0? Is there any value of x that we can put into 1 over x that would end up giving us an answer of 0? And the answer is no. There's nothing we could put in for x that's going to end up giving us an answer of 0. So we can also put in an asymptote, but this time horizontal, to show that we would never expect to get an answer where y is 0. So that means nothing is going to cross the x-axis. So what we've just done here is we have put in two asymptotes. This is the vertical asymptote based on what makes our denominator 0. And this is the horizontal asymptote.
I'm running out of room. We'll try to fit it in there. There we go. Horizontal asymptote. Okay, so those are key characteristics for our graph. They're not actually part of the graph, but they certainly help us to um, make the graph. And so now if we plot our points, our points are going to come from the table that we just made. So we'll have at negative 3, and just to make this a little easier, I'm actually going to go um, every third as being one unit so that I can fit things in just a little bit better. Okay, and I'm going to do that on both axes. Okay, so now when x was equal to negative 3, then I got a one-third point. When x was equal to negative 2, I got a one-half point. So just a little bit higher. There we go. Uh, when we had negative 1, oh, negatives. I'm sorry, guys. Let's fix those. So negative 3 gave us a negative one-third, right about there. Negative 2 gave us negative one-half, right about there. Negative 1 gave us negative 1, which should be right about there. And then the negative one-half gave us a negative 2, which is going to be right about there. So what we can see here is that we're getting a curve that kind of curves into this corner. So sometimes I refer to these as corner huggers because that's kind of what our curve does. It kind of curves right into the, the corner itself to give us one half of our graph. Now, we don't plot anything on zero because again, x equal to zero is undefined. And so if we move over to the positive side now, one half gave us two. There we go. Try that again, get a little closer. Um, Positive 1 gave us positive 1. Positive 2 gave us 1 half. And then positive 3, which is right out here, gave us the 1 third. So again, we're seeing that curve, but this time it's above the x-axis instead of below because we were getting positive answers. So this then gives us the general form for what a rational function looks like. We have our asymptotes on the x and the y axis. And we have our two corner hugger curves that are in the lower left corner and the upper right corner. Okay, so now that we know what the parent looks like, we can use transformations to get other kinds of rational functions. And so when we're using transformations, we again need to look at where A, H, and K would be. The A, as in our previous parent functions, is going to be out in front of the basic parent. So if that's 1 over X, then A is out in front of that. The h is going to be with the x, so in this case that means down in the denominator with x, and then the k is going to be out here added on to the end. Now sometimes we combine this, since a times 1 over something means taking the a times the 1 right here, and we'll just put a on top. So if there's a single number for a on the top, if there's a single number on top, that is A, let's say it that way, and then H will be any number that's being subtracted from X on the bottom, and K will be the number that's out here being added separately. So if we look at the function H of X equals 1 over X minus 2 plus 3, we can identify A as being the 1, because that's the number that's on top. H is going to be 2 because that's what's being subtracted from x on the bottom, and k is going to be the 3, 
because that's the number that's being added at the end. So what does that mean? It means the same thing as what it's meant in the past. An A of 1 means that I don't have any vertical stretch or vertical shrink, and since it's positive, I'm not going to have any reflection. An H that was equal to 2 means that I'm going to move to the right two units. And a K that was equal to 3 means that my graph is going to move up three units. So when I go to graph this, if my vertical axis is norm sorry, vertical asymptote is normally on the y axis, but h says I have to move two to the right, then that means my new vertical asymptote will be at positive two. And my horizontal asymptote, which is normally on the x-axis, since that now is being moved up 3, I'm going to have a new horizontal asymptote here at positive 3. Okay, And then since there wasn't any stretch or shrink or reflection, I would expect that my graph is going to end up in these two quadrants. But just to make sure that I kind of get them where they belong, it wouldn't hurt to pick a couple of x values. So here I'm going to pick an x of 3, which will put me over here on this side of the um, vertical asymptote. And when I put in 3, the 3 minus 2 on the bottom will give me 1. So 1 over 1 is 1, plus 3 will give me 4. So 3, 4 is a point that I know I should have on my graph. Okay, And so with that, I know for sure that my curve needs to be a corner hugger in that corner. Now I can also try something on the right, excuse me, the left side of my vertical asymptote. So maybe I try something like negative or positive 1. When I put in positive 1, 1 minus 2 will be negative 1. 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 3 will give me 2. So positive 1, this is positive, positive 1, 2 is going to be a point that's right about there. And so that confirms that indeed the other curve needs to hug into that corner. And for right now, as long as you get them in the right corners, I'm not going to be too concerned about all of the other points. Okay, right now we're just trying to get an idea of what the rational function would look like. Okay, so we can use the transformations just like we've used them in the past as a way of um, adjusting our graph and getting the graph that we need. Okay, let's try one more here. Oh, sorry. So we're looking at the graph m of x equals negative, don't miss that negative out in front, 1 over x plus 4. So my a then is going to be a negative 1 this time. My h is going to be a negative 4, because remember normally it's negative here. So in order to get plus 4, it must have been a negative 4 for h. And my k is going to be 0 because I don't have anything out here being added on to the end. So in terms of my graphing, that means that my vertical asymptote is going to get moved left four places. And a negative 1 for a means I'm going to have a reflection through x. Okay, so vertical asymptote, one, two, three, four units over to the left. It's going to go right there. Since I didn't have a k, that means my horizontal asymptote will stay on the x-axis like it normally does. And then because of this reflection, instead of being the lower left upper right corners, 
we would expect it to be upper left, lower right corners. So if we try a couple of quick values here, if I try a negative 3, negative 3 plus 4 would be 1, 1 over 1 would be 1, but then we have the negative out in front, so a negative 3 would give me a negative 1, that's going to be a point right about there. If I try 5, sorry, negative 5, then negative 5 plus 4 would be negative 1. 1 over negative 1 is negative 1, but then the negative out front is going to turn it to a positive 1. So negative 5 gives me a positive 1 point that's right about there. So that confirms that our corner huggers really are going to be in the upper left and lower right corners for this graph. Okay, so hopefully that looks pretty familiar to you in terms of using the A, H, and K for transformations. We're just doing the transformations now on the parent fu function of a rational um, function graph. Okay, so if you have any questions about using transformation form, make sure you talk about them and ask questions about them next class. And in next class, we'll take this another step further and talk about other kinds of rationals that don't quite fit transformation form, but are still functions we should be able to graph. So we'll see you next class.